Everyone, welcome to the Mogul Bar Show. My special guest today is Vishnu Saran. He is the founder and CEO of StoryCube, as well as a podcast host and, and filmmaker. Vishnu, thank you. Uh, why don't you go ahead? Thank you for joining me is what I meant to say. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Gabe, for having me on. And uh, I think this is the first um, uh first podcast I'm doing beyond my general usual network of, uh, you know, LinkedIn or any sort of business related networks, yeah. right? So meeting you on Polywork and uh, getting access, getting to know about your podcast was really great. And uh, so um, I, I, I'm trying to build a product for uh, kids around the globe, uh, kids below 15 years. So what I want to uh, highlight over here is with every new consumer device that has come to the market, let, let it be radio, let it be television or the internet um, or the PC and then the mobile phone, the quantum of content made for that particular device has exploded. So when we initially, there were not as many TV shows as uh, they are right now, right? With, with, with the access of internet and with everybody having access to data, uh, everyone is a consumer right now and they, have, they are spoiled for choice. So with, with more access of technology, uh, the quantum of content being made is also increasing because the number of consumers are increasing, their disposable income is increasing, and the disposable time is also increasing because that's what uh, is, is the key commodity over here in the content space. Like how much time do they have in order to um, you know, use it for entertainment? And we are at a moment where there is going to be introduction of new devices. So in 2015 uh, or 2016, when the Alexa sales were slowly picking up, that's when I realized that um, voice can be a very interesting channel for storytelling, right? And we did a couple of experiments throughout uh, the last few years to understand how the users are reacting and what kind of stories can we really tell on these interactive devices. And uh, there is phenomenal response and more repeat usage for stories that are actually uh, having the user as the protagonist or the user asking questions and getting some answers. Where, where it's like your grandmother telling you a story, right? She just doesn't narrate the story at length, but she asks you, do you know what the monkey did uh, at that time? Or do you know which color was the car in? You know, getting the audience involved like that makes storytelling a much richer experience. And that wasn't possible till now uh, because there were no devices that were able to take voice input. So, and just like how we thought it would happen, the quantum of content made for Alexa devices has exploded. And there are, there are more than 200,000 Alexa skills that were developed, right? And, but, but the issue is not all of these Alexa skills are professionally made because let's say you are a content creator. Uh, there is a steep learning curve for you to understand how an Alexa skill uh, is supposed to be developed. It, it involves coding. And let's say you are a developer, you lack the ability to write compelling content and produce it using a, a, a voice cast and stuff like that. So we are at the cusp of that, where we want to be the Netflix for voice, where um, we curate professionally made interactive content that you, that users can play on their Alexa devices or uh, any, any sort of device that is capable of taking voice as an input. So that's what StoryCube is about. So that's pretty good because, you know, you're br basically bridging both worlds. Because like you're saying, you know, to develop um, any content for Alexa requires the skill to understand, you know, or the coding, you know, so that you can bring those skills together. But then they don't have the skill to write compelling storylines. And, you right. know, with the content creators, like, you know, I consider myself a content creator, but I could not develop anything for Alexa in any capacity because... I wouldn't know where to begin. <laughs> so that's excellent that you're sort of bringing that together. And I know that you have an iOS and Android app um, available now. What has been the reception like? Because basically, you're, if your market is for kids under 15, it's really for the parents of those kids right. because they're the ones that have to sort of introduce it to the kids. I mean, some kids that already have mobile phones, you know, yeah, they, they may have an advantage, mm -hmm. but for everyone else, it'll be up to the parents. It'll be the parents' responsibility to introduce it to the, to the children. What has that been? What has that campaign been like? Yeah. Yeah. So, so for us, uh, more than the app usage. So the app is just a discovery part for us. So mm -hmm. in the, in the consumer journey for StoryCube, there are, there are a few. So I told you about Alexa skills and, uh, everybody has an Alexa at home, but how do you discover content on top of it? There is no screen. 
and uh, trying to browse through the skill store on the app it's it's very tedious and you just can't understand the taste of how the story might uh, sound like before you make the decision of enabling it or buying it for your child so the the ios and the android apps that we have is predominantly to bridge that discovery problem so we know that alexa is there we know there are a bunch of applications that you can play on that but which ones are the professionally made ones which ones are worth your time which have both the technical complexity and the content appeal so that's that's where the app comes in picture where you identify that hey uh, this story exists and uh, let me play it on alexa so nice. uh, we have a bunch of users on our app but most of our users are organic where uh, you know they, they they just asked hey what alexa t- give me the new alexa skills or give me the new games that i can play and because we had a lot of organic usage of our stories we got recommended to a lot of users not just in uh, us but in canada uk india and australia right so we over over the span of seven total games or alexa skills that we have uh, we've had around 20000 users playing it uh, for more than uh, 75000 sessions so th- these are some of the metrics that we have and all of this is from the alexa channel only nice. uh, we we have contemplated of creating something on the google side as well somehow we did not have the capital to uh, create both alexa and google at the same time mm-hmm. and and it, it it turned out to be good for us that we chose alexa because google has shut down its third party uh, google action uh, system uh, just a couple of months back so uh, there is also a lot of risk when you are uh, placing your entire business depending on one platform right so story cube while we started with alexa uh voice is not just limited to alexa tomorrow voice is get, going to be there on the laptops uh it's going to be there on your fire tvs or your smart tvs it's going to be there on your vr for sure it's going to be there on your mobile phones so the the vision for story cube is uh that we want to be a content ip powerhouse and uh, we'll have transmedia distribution right we'll have some on alexa we'll have some on oculus we'll have some on the mobile some on the web uh but for us the key uh, asset i would say is the ip is the characters and the worlds that we are going to build along mm-hmm. with the classical adaptations that we would make okay so n- let's talk about this from the content creator perspective i'm a content creator i'm writing a story that i think is going to be the best story ever what motivates me to come to story cube um and, and you know build with story cube you know what what's what is my incentive the story cube now own my content or do i can i take that some place else if i find if i get a better offer like how does that how does that work for the content creator side so for so for content creators we have a uh, 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 an agreement in place where uh, we will so for the content creators the difficulty or bottleneck comes with technology mm-hmm. and uh, so we provide you a very easy format for where, where you can create your interactive skills without learning how to code without understanding the nuances of nlu interaction model and then the api integration and stuff like that so you come up, come with content uh you know it might be audio files that you produce we'll have some benchmark on what kind of quality level that we are looking at and if you pass that sort of quality standard for us then we give you access to our tool where you can quickly create your alexa skill or an interactive story that you want to build and then publish it to various platforms so it's it's going to be a deal where we own certain equity in the uh, partner content because uh, the the tool is going to be for free you don't pay up front for using the tool right and uh, when you do the sales then we take a small proportion depending on uh, a case to case basis uh, right for each storyteller and it, for each project there's going to be a different uh, partnership agreement the level of uh, support that you would require from rn and eventually this creator tool is going to be so uh, advanced that you just have to type the script and let's say there are sound effects you you mentioned that there are sound effects of footsteps right mm-hmm. you would get the recommendation of uh, certain small clips of footsteps that you can add to your story and let's say you type in a uh, dialogue uh, of gabe dialogue 1 gabe dialogue 2 and you give a sample of what kind of modulation that you're looking at we want to eventually build a platform where these dialogues also don't need to be recorded by a voice actor but they they just generate it it's called uh, text to speech generation so that's also possible yeah. right so and, yeah uh, we want to get there where 
yeah so the content creator just has to fill fill in a script and we will try to give him as many tools as possible to make it uh you know production worthy as quickly as possible with with a nice. uh, very less budget from his end because content creation isn't supposed to be concentrated to uh people with capital right everyone mm-hmm. has stories to tell and we should fulfill their uh, dreams or we should enable them to create these stories and i think this tool is going to be very helpful in that way no nice excellent um i don't want to just focus on story cube because there's so much more to you than just story cube you're also a podcast host you you have a podcast what well, what is it unsettling raves uh, ravens right uh, unsettling ravens right. I, i think you have three or four episodes out i think i heard the the first one well not the first one but i heard bankrupt chain <laughs> which you know i i like that's that's where i find out that you're a bernie madoff fan i'm just kidding for anyone watching he's not a bernie madoff fan it's a joke it's a joke you have to watch it in order to get the joke but what is the goal like for your podcast like what stories are you telling because i find that you're you know it's done in a in a great way and anybody who has an opportunity should definitely check it out on youtube because you do it in a very fun way and Yeah, it's just, you know, I like to see fun things being created and being put out there. So, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, thanks thanks Gabe for the shout out. So, the the podcast idea actually was um like a collective baby of mine and my friend Santosh, right? So, we we've, we've had several interesting conversations in our uh, you know, day-to-day lives and we we joke about a lot of things, we laugh a lot and then uh after a week we remind these conversations to ourselves again and then we laugh again right and then uh, we realize that you know these conversations have to be recorded and these conversations have to be solidified you know uh, I- 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 on the internet and so yeah. that we can keep revisiting it and it's also there for the public to look at it and uh, enjoy and more than that so uh, like i mentioned right most of the uh, most of the podcast that i was part of uh, it was mostly about voice cube about creating mm-hmm. these voice skills and you know interactive applications a lot of technology and stuff but that's just one small part of my personality and not even that part which i'm extremely proud of or passionate about right i'm more passionate about a wide variety of interesting things and and santosh is an individual he is extremely intelligent and um, conversations with him is absolutely fun right they have that intellectual depth and they have that hilarious mm-hmm. uh, overarching uh, theme uh, we should do something uh, an activity that's going to be engaging for us and uh, it should be uh, something that we look forward to on a daily basis because most of our lives after a point of time they we hit a routine and then uh, it, it becomes very stale or very uh, bland right so we thought creating a podcast and creating a podcast where we want to kind of unsettle you know different topics and unsettle yeah. popular opinions uh, would be a good idea uh, but we don't want to kind of just rant or uh, yeah. throw our opinions at it but we want like factually based it's a bit like journalism a bit like reporting but also blending in some hilarious uh, aspects Love and it. some uh, Sort of comedy. I love it because you know this is so. When I started my podcast, everybody because I worked in tech was like, you know, are you starting a tech based podcast? I'm like, no. I mean, I'll talk to tech people, of course, because yeah, it's a big part of my life. But at the end of the day, we're all like what you're saying. We're all multifaceted human beings. We all talk about so many different things. You know, when I'm with my wife, I'm not talking about tech. I mean, sometimes I do, but I'm not always just talking about tech. You know, we talk about sports. You know, religion, politics, whatever. You know, friends and family. we talk about food we talk about so many different things and you know it goes to show the humanity of people like no matter where you are in the world human beings are pretty much all the same we all just like to talk get together have a good time and laugh you know about things that maybe people normally wouldn't laugh at so i love to see it so i remember so when i was hearing it especially bankrupt change stood out you know so if you have 2 hours dedicate 2 hours of your time it's a good 2 hours that you're going to spend but it was a good it was a good listen so i like that i i like that you say that it's just about getting together with you know intelligent people intelligent friends just you know it's a nice little thing to do what yeah, else we are shooting the next episode uh, tomorrow by the way and our uh, uh, we didn't nice. come up with a catchy name yet but it's going to be around climate change ah okay i'm definitely going to watch that i'm i'm just you know we got we got to share that everywhere because you know how many people are going to try to debunk climate change or or say something but yeah it, it's it's going to be fun it's going to be fun i i can't wait to hear 
how you guys take, uh, what views you guys take on that. It's going to be fun. So you're an aspiring filmmaker, if I'm not mistaken. Like what, what type of content are you looking to create? Is it centered around the same type of market as StoryCube? Or are you looking to like branch out and do other things? I've made two films so far. And uh, these nice. are not, not feature length films. But one is for 20 minutes and one is for around 40 minutes. The 40 minutes one is much more well-made and uh, using using all the professional equipment, right? And all the standard processes. We we may, we shot that in May and uh, end of May, and then we are going to release it in the next uh, couple of weeks. So nice. the film that I made uh, is, is a metaphorical film. It's a film about a single person who's sitting in his house. And then unexpectedly, there are people walking into his house using legitimate keys. So he doesn't understand how they're coming into his house. And when he asks them, how did they get the keys? All of them say that they got it from a single same person, but these visitors are unrelated to each other. And over the course of one day, uh, he bonds with them. And then he has several conversations with them and uh, just how unexpectedly they've come in, come into his house without informing and due to unforeseen consequent uh, circumstances, they leave the house as well. So it's a, it's a metaphorical film where we want to say that people come and go into your life. It's not in your control. Uh, you have to, practice that attachment and detachment balance. And no matter how many people have bonded with you and left, there are still a lot more people yet to come into your life. So it's a, it's a very open-ended film where uh, you, you should definitely check it out if you are into philosophical. Uh, Absolutely, uh, yeah. You know? yeah. No, that'd be great. I, I, after this, I, I want you to give me uh, the proper names that I can put it in the show notes for the, for the podcast. That'll be great. That's awesome, though. I, I you know, I'm, I'm kind of jealous. Like, I want to make a film, but I have absolutely no skill. Uh, so it's just, you know, it was something that I've always wanted to do, like write something and, you know, make it into a, a movie. I have no so idea what why. I <laughs> what I believe and what I, I actually aspire to do with filmmaking is, you know, what they've done with Marvel, right? Or what they've done with uh, these franchise movies, which are compounding in nature. So I want to create characters like I'm, I'm in the middle of writing a novel. The novel is about face readers. So there's a fantasy world where there are face readers. There are people who reincarnate and remember their past life. There are people who can talk to animals. And then there are people who can manipulate uh, other people's memories, only those who are attached to them. So this is a fantasy world, right? And I'm writing a novel around it. We are also making a VR game around it, uh, which is going to be releasing in Christmas. And I've written a complete script of a seven episode uh, series where uh, it's going to be set in the same world, but at a different time. So I think over the next, next whatever, how many ever decades of my life, I want to concentrate on building these uh, characters, building these worlds and different forms of storytelling from these worlds. Right. So that's, that's what I want to kind of build. And that's where I think my filmmaking uh, aspirations are at this point in time. No, that's great. I, I love that. I, I love that building it over time and letting it grow. I think that's such a great, you know, way to do things because you don't rush something and, you know, especially something that you care about, something that you want to, you know, that you're very passionate about. So I think that's awesome. What do you like? What do you do for fun when you're not just, you know, joking with your friends and recording it or, you know, doing whatever. Yeah. So I think uh, currently my, uh, currently I'm, uh, I know I've been late, but I'm watching Sopranos finally. <laughs> oh man, you're just a little bit late, but that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to ruin anything for you. Yeah. So uh, I consume a lot of content, right? Like a lot of okay. movies. I try to study how they're doing it. I enjoy the writing, right? Like Sopranos, there are these little gem scenes, which, which feel very normal, but a person who is actually into writing or into filmmaking can understand, oh, this is a master scene, right? This is extremely well executed. So nice. uh, for fun, I do that. And then, um, yeah, uh, recently uh, we found a, uh, a very nice go-karting track, you know, in, in near our city. And then it's the only one which has like really high speed uh, carts. So oh, nice. stuff like that, uh, trying out new things is something that I'm very into. And, and one thing which I'm consciously doing these days is 
I'm trying to make new friends because I observed, I caught myself in a, in a situation where after college, I haven't made a lot of friends. Right. And, and it's like, maybe it's because there's a lack of common interface for people mm-hmm. to meet and, you know, spend a lot of time together. People don't make deep bonds of friendships, uh, you know, beyond college or outside work. So I'm trying to consciously increase the number of friends and in- increase the number of interesting people that I meet over the next uh, two or three months. And, and see how it's going to pan out. And if it's going yeah. well, then I'll just double down on it and try to keep doing that because meeting new that. friends. Yeah. yeah, And that's, that's, that's one I reason which, <laughs> yeah, that's one reason why I got into poly work. And, and this is, this has been now I can immediately, I, I was immediately able to resonate with your podcast as well. I've watched a few videos, the intro song and, and all of it. Right. So that's, that's something that we are going to definitely implement for ours as well. But these are the kind of people who you meet and then you get energized and it kind of makes your life much more interesting uh, to uh, look forward to. Right. And yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the, that's the current uh, agenda. No, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. And yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, that was one of the reasons as well. Like poly work has been amazing. It's great feedback. Like you, the community is so much smaller, but so much more involved than you know, a a Twitter community or even a LinkedIn community, which is supposed to be very professional, but it's, I don't know what it's grown, (laughs) devolved. I don't know what to call it, but it's, it's something else. And, you know, I, I do like that small community aspect. I absolutely love that. You know, the idea of doubling down because you're right. I mean, it seems like after a certain, after a certain time, you know, we all get consumed with our lives, you know, whether you're married and have kids or, you know, you're single and dating and just going out with your friends, you know, you don't really have time for new friends because you're sticking to the friends that you know that you either grew up with or met in school. It's really difficult to get into new relationships, new friendships. So it is it is a good way to do it. It's, it's something that's missing. You know, I think there'd be a lot more understanding in the world if people were just to, you know, stop trying to be so antagonistic and just be more friendly toward each other. That's just, that's, you know, I, I think that's awesome. And I, I, I can't wait to hear how that continues to go. You have one friend in me. So, you know, thank you. You know, I'm happy that we connected and I'm happy that able to like record you like this has been really good. What else do you want? What do you want to leave people with before, before we end this recording? Like, what do you want to say to people? Where can people reach you if they want to know more, whether it's about StoryCube, your films, your podcast, like what, where can they find you? So, uh, yeah, people can reach out to me on LinkedIn or people can just write me an email at vishnu at storycube.com, which is story and cube cube with, with a Q because we couldn't get the domain name with C. It's too expensive. And then people can reach out to me on uh, Instagram uh, uh, at the rate I-M-V-S-A-R-A-N. So, yeah, uh, that's how people can reach out to me. Perfect. And I just want to leave everyone with probably one uh, aspect. I was just before this podcast, I was having a lengthy conversation with a friend and we were discussing about, you know, different ways people uh, bump into their purpose in life. Right. And uh, uh, some people just know it instinctively. Some people are, are, are always in pursuit of understanding or are always in pursuit of trying to search for their purpose. And, and I told him a small example of how I kind of stumbled upon it. Right. I did. I, I just thought, I mean, I'm not sure if that's my purpose, but that's probably like an adopted purpose. There is always a great conversation about whether life is, does it, does it even have purpose or not? So there is this very interesting poem. I think everyone should read. It's called Psalm of Life. Uh, it's, it's written by Henry Wordsworth Longfellow. And um, so what, what he says is uh, life is just not a, a boring march to your deathbed or to your graves, but it's much more than that. And uh, we've all observed Uh, lives of great men who have lived before us, who left footprints in the sands of time, which some other shipwrecked brother uh, at some other time is uh, taking inspiration from and uh, taking heart to life again. I mean, he put it in a much better words. I don't, I I can't quote it. Uh, But then that had such a profound effect on me because it, it gave me a sudden immense joy in knowing that okay, if I'm able to create interesting things, some other person who's kind of lost in his life, you know, a century down the line or two centuries down the line, he can read this and he's going to actually muster the courage to live life another day and take heart or have some hope and initiate some other thing in his life, right? Because it happened with me with uh, Mark Twain, reading Huckleberry Finn 
or it 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 happens to me every week when i read uh, one piece manga right so these creators or artists have such profound effect on people's lives it just translates beyond their lifetime as well i i know that this is not a novel thing that i'm sharing but this poem actually sums it up in a very very romantic fashion and i think uh, uh everyone who's listening to the podcast uh, might enjoy reading it once nice man nice i i i'm definitely going to put that in the show notes thank you so much vishnu i really appreciate your time this has been amazing and i i'm really happy that you know i was able to record with you and you know share your story and this is awesome thank you so much i really appreciate it thanks gib <laughs>